right, everyone, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. It's a sun, no, Saturday show. We're going to keep it nice and simple today. I'm up early. It's uh, 4.30 something in the a.m. Uh, I got a lot of work to do today and I got a lot of other fun stuff to do. But I wanted to talk Giants because you know what? That's what we do here. We talk Giants. So let's get into the rumors. Look at all these rumors around me every day. Rumor mill with the Giants is always just everywhere, man. You know, I should put that song in my sound bank, but I didn't. Um, but rumors are just everywhere. You, you, hear them on, you hear them on the news, you see them on Twitter, and I would say 90% of the rumors, especially for the Giants or any other NFL team, are just full of crap. You know, you, you hear that they're going at, you know, they want to go target the pass rusher over in uh, Baltimore. What's his name? Juden. I can't remember. I never remember his name off the top of my head. So it's also 430 in the morning. But they're not going after him. They're not, they, they can't spend the money on Leonard Williams. They're not going to go after him. There's the, also now the rumor of the Giants going after Alejandro Villanueva. Um, I actually did a video about that about a month ago saying that he should be a under-the-radar pick for the Giants because of the fact that my philosophy was you could put Villanueva in at left tackle, move Thomas over to right tackle, have two bookends for a little while. He could teach Thomas you know, not only how to beat a pro, but he could teach him technique, and we could potentially solidify those two sides of the line. And I know he would be a stopgap for a couple of years, but his professionalism, his stability would also rub off on Matt from Connecticut, you know, and Shane Lemieux and Nick Gates and Spencer Pulley, if he's still on the team. It makes sense. Now, salary-wise and logistically, in reference to Villanueva, in reference to where, he at, is he, where he's at in his career, it doesn't make sense for him professionally, probably. Unless he's really gung-ho about playing for the Giants, and there's really no indication that he is. But if you think about it, you know, he's towards the end of his career. He's got a fantastic run in Pittsburgh. You know, Big Ben has taken a pay cut or restructured his deal. So at that point in time, you know, I probably think unless he's looking for a change of scenery that he is going to stay with the Steelers. And I just think that's just the way it's going to work out. And I would love for him to come to the Giants. I really would. And I don't have any inside information when I made that video. I just looked at it from a logistical standpoint. If I was the Giants, how could I solidify my line if I lost Nate Solder. And also that video was predicated on keeping and keeping Kevin Zeidler. So, you know what? That's, that's, that's just, then that's just what we need to focus on. With the, I don't, I don't do a lot of shows when, you know, the giants do certain things. Like if they wave certain players that we knew they were already going to wave. I don't, I don't, I won't do a show because you guys are smart enough and you know this. You knew there was gonna. You knew they were gonna get rid of David Mayo and Golden Tate, so there was no reason for me to to put anything out. And it's the same thing with these rumors. You guys are smart enough to know that a lot of these rumors are just that, and some of them are really just, you know, nonsense that was started on social media. So I think my best um, piece of advice to Giant fans and Giants fans all over, and, and football fan all over, you know. You look at the rumors, you get excited, but more than likely the rumors are just that rumors and they, and they normally stay that way. One thing I did want to talk about was free agency. Dave Gettleman, we are trusting G Dave Gettleman in free agency. We are trusting that he is going to be able to go out there, bring in another Blake Martinez, bring in another James Bradbury Maybe make another great trade for someone like, you know, uh, you know, well, no, <laughs> he hasn't made too Well, the Peppers was a good trade, but we, we have our hopes that he's going to go out there in the free agent market. And we've done videos before, but Dave Gettleman, if you go back, he has never really hit well on free agency, except for that one year in, uh, in one year with the Panthers where they went 15 and one, where he found a lot of lower end talent, veteran talent that gelled. And the sad reality is in Dave Gettleman's tenure, the Giants have won 18 games. You know, I mean, that's just terrible. 
and his he's had some huge free agency swings and misses. And I'm not even talking about, you know, I mean, like I'm, I'm talking about swinging at ball four in the dirt, you know, golden Tate, Nate Solder, Kareem Martin, Jonathan Stewart, Patrick Omami or Omami, oh, Om, Omami, oh, Omami. Oh, that's a mommy. Uh, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm missing Miami right now. The we- the weather went from, uh, the weather went from 50 something degrees back down to 23. I got I got to get back to South Beach. I really do. <laughs> I'm I'm, work, I'm working on that right now. But we're putting our trust in Dave Gettleman and I don't think he's 100% outside of this last year earned that trust. I mean, we have to give him the benefit of the doubt. Only because of the fact that what other choice do we have? I mean, we, we don't have a choice. And we have to focus on. And the, the problem is we have limited. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to beat a dead horse here. We have limited resources, you know, right now, salary cap wise. Yes, we will have more money next year. And not just because of the cap, you know, if the cap going up, we'll just have more money because due to contract values. So this is going to be an interesting season because he needs to work like a maestro and figure out a way to to make those dollars dance so he could turn the limited amount of money he has into gold going into 2022. And the problem is, in some ways, he also needs to protect the cap space going forward in 2022, 2023, and 2024. Because you have Saquon Barkley coming up. And if you feel Daniel Jones is your quarterback of the future, a year after that, you have Daniel Jones coming off his contract. And they always say, especially with a rookie quarterback, you need to win in the first five years or the first four years. Because if they are of any talent, they are going to turn around and just decimate the salary cap. It's going to be a Deshaun Watson situation. Where we're going to pay Jones $33 million. I don't technically think we're going to be paying Jones $33 million. I think he's going to be working at uh, some financial firm in five years or four years. I don't think he'll... I, I, just, I just don't see him as the quarterback of the future. But if you do have that, if he does turn that corner, you're going to have to pay him down the road, along with Saquon Barkley, who you hope come back, who's coming back from an injury. And you hope he's going to come back to be the talent we all think he can be. So Dave Gettleman needs to be prudent and proactive in regards to protecting the cap in 20, you know, for 2022, 2023, and 2024. So that is not, you cannot go out and backload an exorbitant amount of contracts in those years. Because you have to remember, let's say you have $90 million in 2022, you have contracts which you which you load into year two more. So let's say you automatically subtract another 20, 30 million. So now you're down to 60 million. And then more than likely, you're going to push that number out a couple more years. So you're lessening the cap each year. That's why teams have capologists. And their job is to solely monitor the cap situation for that team. I've sat in cap meetings. And it would make your head spin what they have to figure out and how they have to work things and how, how they can pay this guy this and give him a bonus here, but they can't pay him here. And they got to make sure the workout bonus falls under this. And they have to make sure that if they give him an extended bonus that the bonus or the salary, it's amazing. It's a science all in its own. And that's what Gettleman needs to worry about. He needs to be prudently smart with the money he has now, and he needs to be proactive that he's not overspending going in down the road. Because honestly, also, if Gettleman misses in this draft and this free agency, he's not going to be here next year. So we do not need another Jerry Reese cap situation where we're in cap, we're in cap hell. And Gettleman didn't help that cap hell by getting rid of JPP and OBJ all the same year because we, we, we accrued all that dead cap space. 
So we need to focus on that as well. And we have to hope that Dave Gettleman is the guy to lead us through this. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue. We're bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you could like, if you could subscribe, if you could ring that bell, you think you know what that means, that'd be awesome.